I hear all this now and all this talking going on. Everybody's fellowshipping this morning. It's wonderful to see the children of God coming together on this special occasion. We know that tomorrow we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're about to start our worship this morning. And I just want us to know as we, we wish everybody cards are being passed out. We speak into one another. That's a wonderful thing. Amen. If nobody else could get along, get along it should be the children of God. Amen. Come on, somebody. We, we should be able to say every happy, happy, happy. And this morning, I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas. Amen. As I, we were discussing in Deacon in our morning in our Sunday school class, a lot of times you can't even get a card that says Merry Christmas on it anymore because it has Christ in it. So everybody's talking about get a car says happy holidays. Amen. As I as I as your pastor, I want you to say that don't be telling people happy holidays. Tell them Merry Christmas. Amen. Don't take Christ out of it. Hallelujah. And when my my social minister pastor was telling me that somebody on the job was saying that uh, we got to say happy holidays because we're we have to fit in with the world. He says, but be of the world, but not in the world, but not of the world. Amen. And when you start giving in, then they going that's when they start getting control. Amen. We're 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 not supposed to be like the world. Amen. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. Amen. We should see something different in each and every one of us. Come on, somebody. We 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 we, we, we uh, happy holidays. That's all. I'm, I'm talking about Merry Christmas. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we should be talking about this morning. So we're here to celebrate this this holiday season. I know there's people who are traveling to be with their uh, family members and we pray for blessings and um, make sure they're safe as they continue to travel by car, plane, train, how, wherever way they're going to be with their family. But we're here this morning and we're here with our family, amen, the Mount Olive family, amen, because we're all on one accord in this place right now, amen, through what? Through the Holy Spirit, amen, that's who we are. And we have one one father amen amen and that's the father that's our heavenly father amen hallelujah i see all this wonderful red being exhibited amen thank god for red amen because red represents the blood amen thank god for the blood hallelujah as we get ready to go into our worship experience this morning i call the worship comes out to, it says therefore god has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let me read that one more time. So at the name of Jesus every knee should bow come on somebody at the name of jesus we we should just bow because of giving him homage amen some of us are sitting here today because of the name of jesus amen somebody called on doctors they called on banks but it was the name of jesus that's brought us to where we are right now so we should shout hallelujah this morning for the name of jesus and one day everybody's gonna bow at the name of jesus hallelujah as we get ready to go into our morning worship sins. God, let's bow our head. Father God, we thank you for this time of service, Father. We thank you for all that are present here, Father. We pray for those who are traveling, Father, to different destinations on their way to be with family. But God, we thank you, Father, for being able to sit in the pews this morning, Father, and to lift up our voice in praise, Father, as we celebrate, Father, the birth of your son, Jesus, Father. Not his heavenly birth, but the birth when he came down, Father, all those generations, Father, to be born 
one in, heart, in a human form, Father. So we thank you for that, Father. So, Father, as we celebrate this morning, we're going to praise you, Father. We know that tomorrow is the day that everybody celebrates. When we have discussion about is that the proper day, the proper day, should it be this day or should it be that day? I'm not worried about what day it happened on. I thank God right now that it happened, Father. I thank God, Father, that your son Jesus came down and was born, Father. He humbled himself, Father. He left glory, Father, to come down here for us, Father. He could have stayed there, but when he was called, Father, he said, I shall go. And he, and he came down, Father. So we thank you. Father, we celebrate. We thank you, Father, for the gifts. We thank you for everything that's going to happen in this service, Father. But one thing we like, Father, is for the presence of your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Enter into this place this morning. And we just want to say thank you this morning for all that you've done and all that you're going to do in this service today. So, Father, we praise you. We give you honor and glory forever. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. At this time, the time musician is going to give this and a congregation. I'm going to come on, Sister Patsy and Brother Andre. Give us a, give us a number this morning. Amen. 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 this song let's everyone sing let's sing together
morning church praise the lord isn't isn't god good he good all the time and in my life i'm telling you he came at the right time to save me so if he saved me he can save you one of the things jesus said was i am the resurrection of life and whosoever shall believeth in me shall never die uh-oh we in a win-win situation. We winning as we live, and we win when we die. You can't get no better than that, can it? Because most people, well, my auntie told me, she said, well, people won't tell you to go to church. They'll tell you to go to hell first. I said, oops. <laughs> but that's why we got Jesus to come save us from hell. And our scripture reading will be coming out of Romans uh, chapter 15. Starting at verse 13 to 15, and it reads, Now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all the knowledge able to be admonished to one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more bodily unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that you have given to me of God. May God bless the word and the reader and the hearers that you receive a blessing from his word in Jesus' name. Amen. We come this morning to say thank you, Jesus. We thank you for another day's journey. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your birth, Heavenly Father. We thank you for you gave us all that you had. You sent him to die for our sins. You sent him down to this sin-sick world for our behalf. We thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you for you gave us all that you had. Forget about what's under the Christmas tree. Forget about the presence that's been placed under the tree. And think about our Jesus. With our minds stead on him who have loved us unconditionally, who have loved us when we didn't deserve it. We thank you, Heavenly Father, just, just for another day. We don't know if we will pass over in 2024. We just thank you for 2023. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you have brought us this far. We would, not be, 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 we would not be here if it had not been for you. We thank you for your sweet grace and mercy. We thank you for looking down upon us, Heavenly Father, and keeping us this far, Heavenly Father. You didn't have to do it, but we thank you for doing it. Our minds are steadfast on you this morning. We're not worrying about the, everything else that's, that's going on. Our minds are staying on you. Of, because if it had not been for you, we would not be here this morning. We would not be here celebrating and rejoicing in your name. If it had not been for you, Heavenly Father. We, we can't help but give you the grace, give you the praise, the honor and glory that you so rightfully deserve. You deserve it all, Heavenly Father. You deserve it all. We, we keep our minds on you, Heavenly Father. We keep our minds fixed on you. Because you have been mighty good to us, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, that someone is in bereavement this morning. 
remembering their loved ones that they have lost along the way. Someone will be gathered around the table that's going to remember the ones that are missing, remembering the loved ones that they have lost. Heavenly Father, we ask you to comfort them in a special way. Wrap your loving arms around them, Heavenly Father. Let them know that they are in a better place. Heavenly Father, let this day go forth in your name. Let everybody praise you and lift you up, remembering that, it, that if it had not been for you, all this wouldn't be possible. We give you praise, honor, and glory forever and ever because you are so worthy of it all. You have been mighty good to us, better to us than we have been to ourselves. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just love you, Heavenly Father. We can, we can speak to you at any time of the day, any time of the night. Heavenly Father, and you never put us on hold. Oh, Heavenly Father, we lift you up, give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, hallelujah and amen. amen.
know, could have some more of that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. At this time, it's time for our responsive reading. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's time for that. If you don't have a bulletin, raise your hand. The usher will hand you one. It's coming out of Luke. Chapter 2, verses 17 through 14. I'll be reading out of the international version. Amen. Amen. Luke, if you're able to stand, please stand on the word of God. I'll read the light portions and the congregation will read the bold and we'll read the last verse together. Amen. 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 And it reads thus. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him for them in the inn. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were so afraid. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, together with God in the highs and on earth, peace, good will, all men. Amen. You may be seated. Thank God for the heavenly hosts, earth, peace, goodwill toward all men. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, it's time for us to be uh, improper, for us not to welcome visitors. I can't assume everybody here. We know each other. Amen. So if you're a visitor this morning, we ask that you stand. Visitor this morning. A visitor. Amen. 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 Ha hallelujah. Amen. We we remain standing. We'd like to hear a word from you this morning. Amen. Some one of the deacons come and hand the mic to the person, please. All right. We're gonna start with our young lady in the black right here, and then we'll work our way to the bro two young young men, young brothers. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all are not hype enough for me. I thought I was going to come to a church that was a little more. I've been preaching at Caucasian churches, and they don't give no call and response. So I'm going to need y'all to work a little harder this morning. I said, praise the Lord. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to try one more time because I think that the Holy Spirit wants to work just a little bit harder. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hello, Mount Olive. My name is Jamika Hatcher. My mom is Deidre Shaw. <laughs> Um, I came with her to praise the Lord for this year. Um, I am a current student at Pacific University. I will be graduating with my master's in Christian ministry in May. I am a minister of the Lord. I'm thankful to be here with you guys. Amen. Um, how y'all doing? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's have your name, brother. Um, my name is Bright. I come from. Uh, I come from Sacramento. And I'm with my grandma. Just you know, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> hey, this, this lady back here. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, wonderful to be visiting again. To be on Christmas Eve. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thankful that God woke me up this morning and had me right here. My dad is gone off his hat on. So he's here too. 
Amen, amen. On behalf of Mount Olive and uh, my wife and I, we just thank God that you came today to visit. And seeing like everybody came with family, amen, this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Dear, dear sister, dear sister Shaw's daughter, we appreciate you. Amen, amen, amen. Sometimes we as Christians are too quiet sometimes. Because we need to get a little shout in every once. And some of us need to shout more than once. Amen. If God has been good to you, can we get a shout? That's our dear sister. Hey, come on. If God has been good to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but God has been excellent to me. Oh, I, we, there's some situations that we have going in our life right now, but God is still good. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. If you have Jesus, you have all you need right now. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to get into this. But we're going to do this for a minute. Be, be, just, just, be honor. Just, just humor me with your past a minute. Let us get up and cross over the aisle and say hello to our visitors. Amen. Greet them with a Christian hug and, and Merry Christmas to each other. Amen. Not no happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Amen. And Merry Christmas.
Let us sing, come on. Let our music people come on, come on, come on, come on, sister. Declare his glory in this place. Amen. Amen. Not just in this place, every place we need to declare his glory. Hallelujah. As we get ready to prepare for our altar call, as we get ready to go to the altar this morning to pray for those who are on our list this morning. There's a lot to pray for, amen. There's a lot to pray for. Not just for our church, but for this world. God said there'd be wars and rumors of wars. And these wars are going on dividing the world up. But God is still on the throne. And he said the government is on his shoulder. So he is still in charge. So we're praying for the incarcerated, the needy, the shut in, the bereaved. We're praying for the model of his church. We're praying for peace in Israel, in Gaza. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but we need to stop worrying about how many weapons we're going to give them to fight one another. There's too many people talking about getting guns and shooting instead of talking about peace. 
Hallelujah. My wife spoke one day. This, we, we have to understand that the Bible, these, these are cousins fighting over there. Amen. This is a family situation. And we should be praying for peace. For there's, 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 there's blame on both sides. Come on, somebody. There's blame on and the innocent children. I can't watch the news because of the children. And we're praying for Ukraine. Another place of children being the innocent children being punished for the sins of the adults. We want to pray for our own Deacon Guillory. He's in our men at home. We want to pray for Sister Harrison. She is still in Burma for the loss of her husband. Mother Guillory, he, she's here with us, but keep her in prayer and strength. Amen. Amen. And she's always here at church and taking care of her husband. So, so pray for her strength in the Lord. Amen. She is a prime example of what we should. Because no matter what God puts us through, he's always there with us. Amen. Amen. Some of us seem to think that he only comes when something happens or when it's taken care of. Don't you know he knows what you're going through? He's there at the beginning. He's there in the middle. And he's there at the end. Don't judge my God by the beginning. Judge him by what happens at the end. Come on, somebody. Keith Davis, Glenda Smith, Margie Kennedy, we heard from her. She's getting better. Amen. Trying to get out of their convalescent home. She's getting better. Gregory Washington, keep him in prayer. Sherelle Higgins, she's back at the hospital. Keep her in prayer. Joe Mays, we talked to him yesterday. He's, he was in the hospital, but he's at home now. He's been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Amen. But we know one thing. I, you can go to the best cancer surgeon you know. But there's somebody you can always get your second opinion from. Come on, somebody. Hey Amen. I, I don't, my old pastor used to say, it's all right to go to the doctor. It's all right to take your medication. But he said, every time I go, I pray. Amen. Every pill you take, you need to pray over it. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, Patricia Jones, a family, she's one of our prayer partners. She, and she's, she needs prayer. She came on prayer for the family. Mary McGee. Amen. Our own brother Bobby McGee. Keep her in prayer, sister. No. Sister May Daniels, she is the sister of uh, Brother Turney. We remember we had a praise before last year. It's been a whole year that she had to be fed through a tube. And this time, she's now eating solid food. Come on, God answers prayer. <laughs> Michael Norris, Erica Williams. Then our own sister Easter's here. And Anise Kafaro, she, she was here earlier, this, just a little while ago. That, that the, that's the one we prayed for with the meningitis in the brain. Now, now she's in rehabilitation for her memory, and she's doing excellent. So God answers prayer. Amen. Rita Hubbard, little T.J. Grant is our nephew. Amen. He's going to have service, nine years old. So tumors, keep him in prayer. Amen. Keep the, my niece in prayer. Uh, Sister Grant, that's our niece. Keep her in prayer also. Galen Phillips, Mike Bostic, Versi Boykin, and family. You know, Sister Boykin we went through a lot. Amen. Amen. You know, that song they used to say, I've been through a lot. Amen. But I'm pushing my way through. She had a report. I heard this last. Somebody might have heard it. She had a report when she had a re appointment with the doctor about her cancer when last Wednesday it was all negative amen she's got some things to go through amen her son in Vegas he was in the hospital for his cancer he's now at home amen he came home amen so we got you know with the sick we got to give some praise amen our dear sister Jedra Shaw, she's here with her lovely daughter, and amen. And, and she's, she's got some things she's still recovering from, but with prayer, everything will be all right. Little Maya Bunch, James Williams, Sister Gray's nephew. Sister Gray is in Southern California visiting her daughter, so keep her in prayer. We had a, a message 
come through on our internet. Sister Wendy Nelson, you know, she's in Vegas now. She's still using us as her home. She hasn't joined the church yet. She's asking prayer for her, Andrea Ricks, amen, and her mother, that's her niece. So keep them in prayer, amen. As, as you know, last week we talked to you about, we have a granddaughter, our granddaughter. She's, she's missing, amen, our, our, our granddaughter. Her name is us, is Amina Norman, amen. She is the daughter of our youngest son. But we asking for prayer, amen. I, I want you to know just because we're our pastor, we're, we're not immune to things happening in our life, amen. I'm a, I'm per, I'm a man just like you are, I'm human just like you. Things going to happen in your life, but you have to keep your confidence in God. Keep your confidence in God. Because if you can't turn to God, who else you going to turn to? Hallelujah. So we have to understand that we need to go in prayer this morning. I'm asking Minister Avis to come up and lead our altar call this morning. Because we need to go before the Lord this morning. We celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior tomorrow. But we have to understand something. He came for us not just to have a celebration. But he came to save us. And that's when we have the celebration when we are saved. Amen. That's when the celebration begins. But we come, and she's going to pray for us, but we need to come to the altar on our own behalf. Come knowing that God will answer prayer. I'm telling you right now, if you're going to come to the altar this morning and you don't believe God answer prayer, stay in the pew. Amen. Amen. Because we need to come to the altar this morning. Come believing that God answers prayer. I believe I must I believe my granddaughter's gonna be found. I believe that. If I don't, shame on me. God come this morning. We need prayer this morning. Hallelujah. We need prayer. And some of us need to thank God for what He's already done. Some of your prayers have already been answered. Thank God for what he's already done. Amen. As this Minister Avis comes this morning, think of those things that you desire from him, knowing that he will answer your prayer. His sweet, I know. His sweet, I know. Dark clouds may come and stormy winds may blow, but I'll tell the world wherever I may go. That I found a savior and he's sweet I know he's sweet I know he's sweet I know Dark clouds may come And stormy winds may blow And I'll tell the world Wherever I may go that I found a savior and he's sweet I know hallelujah Lord we lift you up Lord hallelujah Lord we will die before you Lord Lord, we lift you high above the earth, Lord. You said it. 
if I be lifted up above the earth, Lord, you would draw me, and you draw me, and you draw me, and you would draw them, Lord, you would draw them home, Lord, draw them to the cross, Lord, draw them to their knees, Lord, draw them to your grace, Lord, draw them to your goodness, Lord, draw them with your love, Lord, draw them, 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 Lord, Draw your people, oh God, home. Those who don't know you by name. Those who sit in the dark places. All in the pimp house, the whole house, the drug house, the sin, the prisons, Lord. They're waiting in darkness, Father. In the dark places, waiting to be drawn to you, God. Waiting to be called out of darkness. Waiting to be called back to your marvelous light. Waiting to be forgiven, Lord. Waiting to receive that forgiveness that you did on the cross. You forgave all men because John 3, 16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's everybody, God. Everybody, God. Everybody, God. And in your word in the Old Testament, you said, if we're faithful to your word, you will save our children to the sixth generation. We have no fear, Father, what our children are doing right now. Because you saved us, you're going to save them. You're going to find them like you found us. You're going to call them out of darkness like you called us out of darkness. You're going to call them out of that mess. You're going to call them out of that pain. You're going to call them out of that fear. You're going to call them out of unforgiveness. You're going to call them out of being hateful and mean. Lord God, you're going to call them like you saved us. You took it out of our hearts. You filled our hearts with your loving kindness. Now, oh God, go forth now to our children. All of our children, wherever they may be. All of our children's children, wherever they may be. All of them, Lord, and call them by name. Call them, oh God, shed out of our seat. Call them right now to the throne room. Call them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid where your children are, what they're doing, because you're saved. And you know how you were in the world. God called you back. And he will call them back when it's time. He will call them in that due time. He knows where they are. He knows their name. He knows. He knows your heart. He knows the burden you carry. He knows your tears, your cry. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. He is an ever near God, ever present God, ever hopeful God, helpful to us, a help in time of trouble. We pray for everybody on that prayer list. Everybody in this room suffering some affliction, some form of ailment, some form of hate, some form of unforgiveness. You can't let it go. It's hurting you. You can't let it go. It's making you sick. You can't let it go because you just can't let it go. I bind that spirit right now to loose your hold on you. Loose those cords of hate. Loose those cords of unforgiveness so you can be free free in your deeds free 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 walk in freedom walk in liberty walk in happiness half what god of you laugh i say laugh he got over see our robot laugh i say cut up by tc robot laugh in the name of jesus let your joy be restored let your joy be restored right now let your joy be restored right now let your joy be restored right now right now right now because this is the season when god came and said his only begotten son and he said peace peace on the earth we bring to you peace like no other god brought peace to man let that peace now reign in your hearts let it reign in your hearts let it reign in your home let it reign in your conscience let it reign in it of us say let it rain and rule in your hearts let it rain right now in the name of jesus hail jesus king of king and lord of lords hail jesus king of king and lord of lords hail jesus 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 by no other name shall man be saved. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Even the demons flee at the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Call on that name. Call on the only name that can save. Deliver and give you power and hope. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I pray for you. I pray for your affliction. I pray for the sick. I pray for the downtrodden. Feeling lonely right now. Season. Christmas time. I pray that your peace come. I pray for your peace. That you don't be weary and well doing. I pray for your peace right now. In the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Till we are called in the one body of Christ. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen.
Come on, church. Come on, come on. Getting ready to continue our service. I just got, I want to thank the church as a, a spirit has entered into this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And one thing it says in the word, don't quench the spirit. Amen. That means when the spirit comes, we, we follow what the spirit tells us to do. Amen. I want to give a little shout out to some people. I just, I've told them how I admire them, but I just want to let the church know my a dear little friend, I call her my little praise lady, Sister Keisha back there. You know, she had to go, amen. She, she had been through, she had been through a lot of operations. And, so, and she's been back a couple Sundays, but I want to let her know that her pastor appreciates her. Amen. 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 Uh, she inspires me. She should inspire you because some of us, we got the food. We, we, we all healthy, wise, we do a whole lot of things. But Keisha don't let nothing stop her from getting up and praising God. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. This other person, I've told them personally, uh, Elaine Mitchell, tell your daughter to stand up. She says, come on, stand up, baby. This, is a, this young lady here is a hardworking young lady. She's working a couple jobs, and I told her last night, I'm going to tell her and let you know, I admire her so much for the relationship she has with her mother. She's, she's, she's been taking care of her. I say that because we have young people out doing things. They're not all bad doing something, but I just want her to know. I've told her personally, I'm telling you in front of her, I admire you. I thank God for you and taking care of your mother the way you do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right, it's time to get ready right into our service some more. And this time, we're going to have our music department is going to come and give us a number. And then the next person we have, we have a special treat this morning. We have a young lady that's going to 
dance for us, Sister Marquisha Zan. She was in charge of our praise dancers, and you, if you've ever seen them perform, you know that she is a woman with great talent and a woman blessed by God. Amen. Then after that, as the king asked, is there a word from the Lord? And there is a word this morning. Sister Norman will be bringing the word this morning. Amen. Amen. So, so our music department, will you please come and give us a number? And then after that, uh, we're going to move the, so Marquisha had plenty of room, amen, to, to do what the God called her to do, amen, amen. So music, come on up, give us this number, then after that, Sister Zant, and then, uh, then Sister Norman, amen. Are you glad you came to church this morning? Uh, Oh! 
that your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would call? storm with his hand Didn't you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try And when you kiss your little baby You kiss the face of God Oh Mary Come on, come on, another hand of praise, another hand of praise. Praise him with the instruments. Praise him with the song. Praise him in the dance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just meditate on who he is. The sacrifice that was made for you and I. Just meditate on the goodness. Just think of his goodness to you. Just think. 
speak of his goodness to you that he would come all the way from heaven down hallelujah to save a wretch like you and I just to save us hallelujah thank you Lord glory to God I thank my dear friend and I call her my work daughter because we worked together so long but for her to bless us with that dance let's give her a hand yeah. hallelujah and I want to just acknowledge the presence of my birth daughter back there, Mar Marlena. She comes down. She's, I think she's her daddy's girl. You know, he, he spoils her so much. Every time something breaks in Sacramento, she's calling daddy to come up and fix it. So here she is now. I uh, thank her for coming down from Sacramento to be with us. And all of you that are visiting with us. Um, the Lord has taken me in a different direction this morning as occasionally he will tell me which, you know, not to do it this way but to do it that way. And so I'm doing it the way the Lord said. Those of you that have your Bibles here and those of you that are watching online, uh, we're going to Luke, the first chapter. Luke, first, first chapter. Go get your Bibles, those of you that are online, because I know I, th I find about we're getting comfortable in, in this uh, pandemic. Uh, we're getting comfortable staying in our pajamas and watching online, you know. Amen. But I, when, when I see you going to the ball games and when I see you at the mall, I'm wondering why the church is the only place we think we can get COVID. You know. It's the only place we can go everywhere else we want to go. Well, uh, Luke first chapter, I'm going to begin at the uh, 46 verse, 46 verse. Luke, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. And those of you online, get your Bible, dust it off. Amen. Go find, go find it somewhere and uh, pull it out. Luke first chapter. Uh, it's called, referred to often as the Song of Mary. Song of Mary. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant for behold henceforth all generations will be called will call me blessed for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation for he has shown strength with his arm he has scattered the proud in their imagination of their hearts he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich has he sent away empty he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever and Mary remained with her at Elizabeth for three months and returned to her home. Amen. You may be seated. And I'm, the Lord gave me this. Uh, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Glory to God. As we pray, Heavenly Father, I ask that you open our hearts, our minds to receive what the Spirit says to the church today. God, as we look back on what you have done and how you've shown us your love, God, open our hearts and our minds and let us be, have a heart of thanksgiving and thankfulness because you loved us so much that you reclaimed us and redeemed us. God, we thank you for your Son that you sent in our stead when we couldn't do for ourselves. God, we thank you. We recognize who you are, God. I ask that you speak through me and to your people. Let them hear a word from you, oh God. Not from me as a human being, but from you, the almighty God. Let them hear your voice. Father, let them hear you speak. Even in these days, these last and evil days, that you still speak and you still move and you still open doors. 
you're still making a way. You're still redeeming the lost. You're still calling us out of darkness into your light. You're still God Almighty. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we look into this uh, Christmas Eve, I think some are still out at the mall and some are doing other things. But uh, we got to remember the reason for the season. That's not a cliche. But something we really need to recognize and look at. Jesus was born for several reasons. One of the primary reasons was to save mankind from sin. According to the Bible, Adam and Eve sinned, and as a result, mankind was cut off from God. Jesus was born to save mankind from sin and to reconcile us back to God. Reconcile, that's to bring us back, put us back in perspective, put us back in our rightful state. Because when we were created, when man was created, he was created perfect. When he, God created him, and, and, and it was good. There was no one else to praise God when he created, created the heavens and the earth. God, 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 he, he, he recognized and praised himself. He said, and that's good. Amen. When he put the, the stars in the sky, the fish in the sea, God himself who needs what's our praise and recognizes that we were created to worship and praise him. God himself, before even man was created, God praised and said it was good. Now it comes down to us having to be reconciled because of the sins of our original parents of Adam and Eve that caused a gulf between God and mankind. Another reason Jesus was born was to reveal God's character to humanity. Jesus also came to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. What, you know what ransom is? Okay, when ransom, when you got to pay ransom, you got to reclaim something. Uh, uh, this belongs to me unless you do such as X, X, Y, and Z. Well, well, man had fallen. Man had fallen so far away that Amen. That, that needed to be a redeemer. Needed to be a savior. God sent just that gift. That special gift on Christmas morning. Heaven sent a wonderful, supernatural, special gift. Heaven sent God, Jesus all the way from heaven down to, to reclaim and save us. Now we know the wages of sin are death. But the gift of God is eternal life. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All, you know, they're looking at the little baby, we, they're born in sin. But that's just a sin nature. It comes because of Adam and Eve and because we've come so far away from God's original purpose for mankind to serve and to save. Mankind was originally made it to worship God and to... Give glory to God. And, and just as the angels do around the throne, man had a unique place. Because God created man in his image. Amen. Amen. That, now the angels can't claim that. God, God created mankind, womankind in his image. So we, we're special to him. We're part of his heart, the heart of God. And, that, and you know, that's why the enemy fought so hard to, claim, to keep you from knowing who he is. Because you're made in his image and because he loved you so much, he called you by name and he made you in his image. He's still calling you today. Amen. He's still calling men and women from darkness into his light. God is still calling. Can we hear what he's saying? And, then, and then my songwriter friend, she said, why are you waiting? Because the Lord is speaking. He's speaking to you and I today. God is still speaking. Can't you hear his voice? Because he speaks in various ways. He speaks in an earthquake. He speaks through the storms. He speaks upon the seas. He speaks in the wind. He speaks with the birds of the air. God still speaks. As you see the wind blowing and you, see, you, can't, you don't know where it's coming from, where it's going to, but that's the movement of God. And you've got to know, even you can't see him, he's still moving. Even though you can't touch him, he's still at work on your behalf. Our God, our God, our God, your God and mine, awesome God. Now, as a ransom for, uh, to save us from the lost, the gift of God, again, is eternal life. 
We've all sinned. Some say y'all have sinned. We go out there and we see the world. We see what they're doing. We go out to see the prostitutes. And all the, oh, y'all have sinned. You go out there and you see the drunkard. You know, oh, look at y'all. But I say, now, he said, all have sinned. There's no big sin and little sin. We want to put in category. The murderers don't, don't differ than the, the liar. Amen. Some of you want to, uh, uh, amen. Uh, uh, you know, you know that uh, an item costs X amount of money, but the, the, the cashier rings it up wrong, and give you a little discount. And some of them, uh, oh, look at God. That ain't God. <laughs> you, you have a, that's, 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 that's you taking advantage and stealing, really. You know, let's, let's, let's be honest people. Let's be honest people. God created us uh, uh, in his image, to, to, in his likeness. And, and so since all have sinned and fallen short of the, of the glory of God, we must stop and think. We've fallen short, and mankind just has a sin nature and must be paid for. Must be paid for, or God is a liar. And God cannot lie. He's not a man that he would lie, or the son of man that he would need to repent. God said the wages of sin is death. God said. So that, what does that mean? That means that once you've sinned, you've got to pay a price. Somebody's got to pay. Somebody's got to pay the price. So, so who will pay that price? You know, God is not a man that he should lie. And therefore, there's some of the most important reasons why Jesus came. Because all have sinned and come short of his glory. God gave the original human beings the gift of free choice. I want to repeat that because sometimes that, that, that bothers me. And I'm, I'm not for abortion at all. But if they make a choice, that's their choice. And you've got to live with your choices. Even God gave man choice. He didn't force them to, even now he doesn't force you to receive the blessing of him. You have a choice. To, to choose right or wrong, and every choice that you make come with consequences, yes. That's consequences from making bad choices. Amen. I, I, I believe that's why my granddaughter is not is, is, uh, missing. She had some bad choices. Ain't nobody sitting up here saying she didn't. Some company we told her don't keep. Some people that she start, decided to be around, but that was her choice. Her choices. And sometimes your choices, you can't reverse. Let me repeat that. You make some choices that you got to live with the rest of your life. You can't reverse. Bad choices. Bad choices. And, and some, you know, I'm looking at young people, you know, when the, when the elders or their parents or somebody try to tell them right from wrong, we don't know nothing. Right? We, we don't know nothing. But, you know, when you got try to tell them what's right, and they're going to say, oh, that's old fogey. That's old timey. Amen. Huh, Marlena? Uh-huh. That, 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 that stuff, though, that's, that's from back then. We don't think like that these days. Amen. But bad choices can lead to bad consequences. And that's why when Adam and Eve made some bad choices, not only did it affect them, but generations afterwards. Do you know your bad choices can affect generations? You ever heard of that thing of generational curse? I, you know, they said there's a generational curse. We got to break it. Now, you know, uh, so, uh, uh, this one became pregnant out of wedlock, and then a daughter came pregnant out of wedlock, and then a granddaughter came pregnant out of wedlock. Oh, it's a generational curse. There, there can be generational curses. But eventually, somebody's got to stop and get some good sense. Amen. Yes, he gave Adam and Eve the gift of choice. He said, that the, the, this tree don't touch this. But they decided, oh, you know, to listen to the enemy. He said, oh, God didn't mean that. You won't surely die if you, if you, if you touch that tree. It, 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 oh, God didn't really mean that. So, so the enemy got tricked her into believing that God didn't know what he was talking about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Then I, I won't get into that, but you know, he gave the, he gave the command to Adam, who get, who told Eve. So when Eve uh, fell, nothing happened. What happened? Nothing happened. She didn't get no good sense, and she didn't. But she gave it to her husband. And, and I don't want to talk about weak. What what the word brother brother Terry called them, weak noodle back Christian men. Weak, weak men that, that, that with the noodle back, you know, just, just, just weak. So, so I think Adam was one of the noodle back men. He didn't have to buy, he didn't have to take that fruit, but he, when he did, then their eyes became open and they, oh, we're naked. Ooh. So it took, it, you know, it, it t- took the two of them together to cause the sin to come into the world. So now we have a dilemma. Now there's a great dilemma. They missed the mark. And how many of us make the wrong decisions and miss the mark? (laughs) Why did God desire to reveal his character to mankind and have Jesus be born? Jesus had to be born because Adam and Eve failed to carry out God's mandate to glorify him in their life. And many of us failed to carry out that same mandate today. It was left for the Son of God thousands of years later to ultimately fulfill the divine revelation of God's character and purpose for man. Strange thing. If you th- Jesus was born to die. He was born to die. Jesus had to be born to remove the sins of humankind through a perfect sacrifice. Perfect sacrifice. You have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they offer sacrifices to God. God asked Abraham, the father of the faithful, to sacrifice his son Isaac as a test of faith and obedience. Though God intervened to stop Abraham from actually going through with it. Abraham's willingness to give up foreshadowed the role of God, the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice for our sins. Read John 3, 16. You're familiar with that? Isaac, in offering no, you see, Isaac didn't give any, any restrictions or he didn't oppose it he just he and, and everybody you kind of think Isaac when he was taken up to be sacrificed that he was maybe a child you know that we want to think of that but he was a grown man Isaac could have easily gotten away from his elderly father he could have easily said no not not me uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh. but he submitted to his, the will of his father that that was a, that was but the submitting to the will of his father, just as Jesus did, when he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Submitting to the will of his father. And I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I don't want to take you too many places, but if you think about it, God has always got a ram in the bush. God has always got an answer to every problem. You know, and, and this mountain of Mount Moriah where, the, where, where, where God told uh, Abraham to take his son to sacrifice him, this mountain, there were many ranges, but God said, I'll show you when you get there. Many peaks, many hills, but I'll show you when you get there. And that, you know, that took faith, a faith walk, to go where God leads you and not know. Not have a road map, and God don't have to give you no road map. Look at your life. See where you come from and where God is leading. He don't have to give you no road now. Just have a faith walk. Trust God. And know that there's a ram in the bush when you get there. And it, it, the thing I like about it, I thought about this today and I had to, I had to hear it again for myself. It, uh, there was a ram who was tied in the thickets by his horns. And they tell me rams don't even climb that high on mountains. Normally, but God will change nature in order to meet your need. God can change nature in order to see that there's a ram in the bush for you. And, and, and if it takes you a little while to get, he'll hold it there. 
tied in the thickets until you get to the location where God will release it for you and be that perfect sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for that perfect sacrifice. God, so when he asked him to, to, to do all of this and be obedient, as I'm saying, Isaac could have resisted because he was a grown man. <laughs> but he didn't. He submitted to the will of the Father and God intervened. But this was just a foreshadow of what was to come. Isaac, he didn't offer any resistance. He was willing and obedient and to his father's will. And, and when we look at it, I thought about this song. He said, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, oh how he loves you and me. Uh, he gave his life. What more could he do? Oh, how he loves you and me. And you know, and in the beginning, they would have to offer sacrifices. And, and, but now, since we're sinking so deep in sin, lost in despair without a life jacket in the sea of despair, looking for answers even today, God reclaimed me when he sent his son all the way from heaven down so that we may ju be justified by the Lamb of God. I want you to just say, turn, just say, say justified. justified. I, I can't hear you. Say justified. justified. You know what that means? Just as if I'd never sinned. Justified. Say it again. Justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. Justification because God is that kind of God where regardless of where you've been and regardless of what you're going through, he doesn't see you as seeing you. But just like I, I put this over this little microphone here, I put it over there, and you, you don't see nothing, right? You can't see the microphone, but it's still under there. God sees us through the blood of Jesus. He don't see you where you are, but he sees you through his covering. The covering that Jesus is for you and I, the covering that came because of the perfect sacrifice. You know, you used to have to bring bulls and lambs and all kinds of offering, and it had to be totally pure and without blemish to come and be an offering to God. He, he, you couldn't bring just any old kind of lamb into the Holy of Holies or into the... You, it had to be with a young lamb without any spot, without any blemish. It, it had to be a dove. It had to be... Some blood offering had to be given to atone. To, atone means to cover up man's sins. To... to you know, and I, I thank God because every year they had to come back and do the same thing. And then they would have what they called the, you ever heard of a scapegoat? Y'all heard of that? Yeah. They would, after they would do the sacrifice, they'd have to they'd have a goat that they'd send out to, uh, and uh, slit his throat and let him walk away. away. And it, it was supposed to be an escape, a, a scapegoat that covered the, took your sins outside of the camp. But every year, it wasn't enough. The blood offerings were enough. It couldn't cover the multitude of sins that we had. So but the scapegoat would kind of carry it out, and the next year we'd come back and do the same thing. Next year they'd come back. And, and it was so, it was so, it was so uh, such, a, such a ritual and such, that even the priest had to be a certain way to come into the Holy of Holies. They couldn't just come in because if they weren't right, they would fall down dead. In the presence of God. Amen. You read that. It's in there. It's in the book. They would have to tie a bell on him with, his, on a, with a rope. So if he fell dead, they can pull him out because nobody could go in and get him. That's, that's, even the priest had to come in a certain way. You couldn't come before the Lord any kind of way. You know, we, we're part of, part of the royal priesthood. And we want to come in the presence of God any kind of way. Like the sister said, we, don't, we can't even give a good thank you, Jesus. We can't even give a good hallelujah. God has brought us this far. And, and some, some of you don't even know how to give a wave offering. Amen. If you don't say a word, you can wave your hand. Amen. Amen. I, I'm just saying, we can't, we can't just come before a, a, a holy God any kind of way. We've got to come through the blood of the Lamb. And we've got to come with a pure heart. None but the pure in heart shall see God. And we've got to come, if you want to see God, in a pure heart. But... Uh, Again, that perfect sacrifice, because no longer 
after all of these years of sacrificing with the blood of doves and the blood of, of bullocks and the blood of, of goats and the blood of sheep cover the sins of mankind. And even for the temporary thing, atonement. But we're looking here. He reclaimed us and, 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 and we're the, he's the first priest, divine priest, after he completed the sacrifice and was able to sit down. He sat down at the throne of God because it was finished. He sat down. He was the only priest that was able to sit down. The work was done. The other priests had to keep going, keep going, keep. But Jesus was able to sit down because the work was finished. Oh, he finished it for you. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we, uh, he loved us and he gave everything for us. He gave us the be very best that he had. We yearn to hear the angels proclaim peace on earth, goodwill to men. Don't you want to have peace on earth? Aren't you tired every time you turn on TV there's wars and rumors of wars? Wouldn't you love to hear the angels sing peace on earth, goodwill to men as they proclaim the night that Christ was born? He still calls us today to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can you hear him calling? Because I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master, hallelujah, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry all from the waters. He lifted me and he lifted you. Now safe am I, hallelujah. It wasn't the nails that held them to the cross. We want to talk about, yeah, the baby was born, but the baby was born to die. Wasn't it wasn't the nails, but love that held him there. Because God so loved the world. It was love that held him. Amen. So we stand here justified because of Christ. We're covered, and God sees us through the blood. Regardless of where you've been and what you've been through or where you, God is not afraid to reach you right where you are. Some of you may not have received him. Some of you online might still be questioning. But right, say, I got to give up this. I got to give up that. Just give your life, give yourself to Jesus. Let him do the cleaning up. Don't worry about what other people say, but yield, your, yield to him and give yourself to Jesus. Because the scripture tells you, you don't have much time. Give yourself to the master. You don't have much time. You see the signs of the time. God is coming again soon. And we won't, don't you want to be ready? Praise God that one day his spirit leaped into the Virgin Mary. He was, and he was born one day in the city of David, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Yes, he was born. And I, 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 I was reading and I think of God. Praise God that he makes us to lie down in green pastures and leads us beside still waters. He leads us, he leads us, he leads us beside still waters. And, and, and I was studying, I even asked my husband, is this true? It says sheep will not drink from rushing water. If it's rushing, uh, they, they, they won't drink from it. And I said, why won't they drink? But they're afraid if they fall in with the heavy fur that they'll sink. Still waters, that represents the word of God. He leads us to the still waters that run deep. And all you can see is the surface. It's greater than what's on the surface. Still waters run deep. And God, the word of God, is water to dry and thirsty land. God's word, we need to lay down beside it. The still waters of his word. Let him nourish you and let him ref refresh you because we go through life's toils and trials and temptations and struggles. Yes, we do. And, and, and you know, I'm thinking about that and I'm not going to keep you too long. The water that he gives, God, Jesus said, once you drink of this water, you'll never thirst. And then what he told the woman at the well, take a drink, take a drink. He wants somebody to take a drink today. Drink from the still water of his word. Drink from the water from the well that never runs dry. Drink from the water 
that comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It never runs dry. You know, uh, 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 I'm sorry to pick on you, Brother Turner, but he was talking about his well ran dry with time. They had to dig deep, go deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and you know that, I said, thank God I don't have no well because that's expensive. But Lord God, uh, uh, going deeper and deeper, but because it, it, it dries up. But uh, think about the word of God, the well that never runs dry. You never, amen, amen, it flows, reaches from the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley, the blood of Jesus, the well that never runs dry. Amen, 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 amen. The water that Jesus gives today, the water that he gave when he was born, in that manger, when the Holy Spirit leaped into Mary. Amen. When he was born in the city of David to fulfill the prophecy. Amen. Lowly, you know, the son of God. Prince of peace. He could have been born in any mansion. But God brought him in a humble way. Amen. Amen. You know, just think of how humble he is. And some of us want to boast. When we have a little degree or we got a big house or we got a good car. And we want to boast about that. But look at the humbleness of our Savior. Humble. Yes, the cattle of a thousand hills belong to him, but yet humble. A spirit of humbleness. In Christ, in Christ, regardless to what you're going through, regardless of the trials of your life, in Christ, you can rest on a pillar of peace and a cushion of confidence in Christ. Knowing that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord that are called according to his purpose. You can rest on a pillow of peace. With Christ, with Christ we can walk like you're rich and you don't have to have a dime in the bank. In Christ. Praise God that he is our hope. Praise God that he is our peace. Praise God he is our life. With Christ, we can rest assured that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. God so loved the world that he gave us the very best that he had. God so loved you and I. He gave us the very best he had. He gave us his only begotten son that so we might have a right to the promised kingdom. We're heirs to the kingdom. Heirs to the promise of the kingdom. Oh, how glorious. Oh, how marvelous. We're heirs, joint heirs, because a baby came. Born to die. To be a ransom, to pay the ransom for us because sin had left a crimson stain. Born to pay a ransom for us to reclaim us back to our original state in God so that he, we can be covered by his blood, by his life, his example. We can live. We can stand. We can walk like we are rich and don't have to have a dime in the bank because of who God is. So heaven sent us a very special gift. Heaven sent us a wonderful gift. Heaven sent us a redeemer who is Christ the Lord. When I'm sad, to him I can go. No other one can hear me. So God, when I'm sad, oh, Jesus makes me glad. When I'm sad and despondent, Jesus can pick me up. When I'm down and out and depressed, Jesus can wipe the tears from your eyes. When you feel like you're at the lowest point. Jesus, 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 call his name, Jesus, he's a wonderful savior, hallelujah, born to redeem us from our sin, born to die on the cross, to be the blood offering, and when he finished, he set down glory, hallelujah, he sat down, he sat down, it was finished, no more he didn't have to come back another time and the veil was rent in the temple so that anyone whosoever will can walk boldly to the throne whosoever will let them come because of Jesus hallelujah 
When I'm sad, he makes me glad that he's my friend. He's on my side. He's on your side if you know him. If you know him. If you don't know him, you got to get to know him. I was, I was looking at, at the, we have a family chat and we have family prayer of my sisters, my nieces, my nephews, all from a, and, 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 and they said, well, somebody needs to take this, this 12 year old say, I want to go to church. And they said, and his mama won't get up and take. I said, what? 12 year old seeking Christ. And you know, in times like these, we need a savior. And, and, and if we don't tell them who will, if we don't show them the way to Calvary, who will? We're in a dying world, and here we got children. Another one say, well, well, this other niece, she want to be baptized, but her parents say, I don't belong to no church, so I don't know if she can be baptized or not because I don't belong. Take them children to church. Able to take them because they need it. Just like you needed him, they going to need him too. Just like we needed a savior, they're going to need him too. Just like you needed a company keeper, they're going to need him. We've got to save. We can't lose a generation because we've been too selfish to share the good news. To lose a whole generation of young people who are asking and please take me to church. I want to know more about it. Here this 12-year-old, want to, and the parents won't get up. Oh, you know, I feel like driving up there right now. <laughs> and, and, and take my belt out and get this get to whooping. Y'all get up. Take these children, let them know who Jesus is. They can't make it without him. I couldn't make it without him. Could you? Got to have him. Got to have him. And as I close, it says, Where do I go when no one wants to hear me? Who can I talk to? When no one wants to listen, who can I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I can go to the rock. I can go to the rock. His name is Jesus. I can, can you go to the rock today? He's a lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. His name is Jesus. And I'm happy just to know that I'm his child. Are you happy today? Glory to God. Let's remember the sacrifice of the baby in the manger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your sister Norman hand of praise. Hallelujah. We're going to give out our invitation this morning. Amen. I, as I was, we're going to give, we're going to give our invitation. Let us stand, let us stand. The title of her message this morning is that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, I'm gonna tell y'all know y'all remember y'all remember some of that song, that song. You know that was Gladys Knight singing it at first, amen. But James took it over and said, and he admitted, I took it from her. But he said, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. See, tomorrow, tomorrow, some of your grandkids, your great grandkids, they'll be running to the, to the tree and look under there for their gifts. And you didn't pay money to have it all wrapped up in foil with bowls all over it. They don't care nothing about that or covering. They're going to tear that stuff up and go see what's in the package. I, I'm telling you, there's another present that came. It was not wrapped in foil. Didn't have any bowls on it. But this package was wrapped up in some flesh that was laying in a manger because there was no room there you know the story in the end but see this 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 present i'm talking about that was wrapped up in this flesh this 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 human that came all the way down for our sake is the gift of salvation 
It's the best gift you can have. And you, can, you, know, and you need Jesus to have this great gift. I know Jesus is the best thing that, 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 that ever happened to me. I, I've, I've come a mighty long way, Brother Turning, from what, what God had given me, what I started out with. But on the way on my journey, I can still say Jesus is the best thing that happened to me. I'm blessed with wonderful children. They had their issues, Sister Boy. You know what we're talking about when they grow up. I've been blessed to have them be all right. They're not where I would like them to be, but they're, they're not where they could be. Could be. So, so what? What are you saying? I, of all the material things I've gotten, all things God has given me, and everything, every incident I've been through, every one of my children I love dearly, I still say, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Sister Patrick's playing, I surrender all. This old song we all in the church, we used to sing that song, I surrender all. That means you gave everything over to Jesus. Are you ready to give it all over to him? Until you do that, you can't say Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. You need to surrender it all to him. Let him have full control over your life. And as my wife said, and I preached last Sunday, we got to teach these children when they run under that tree. Don't, 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 don't get upset. Don't even let them have their little fun. But y'all need to tell them. Ain't no little man in no red suit, no beard brought that to you. Jesus, who blessed me, had, and I'm able to bless you. Jesus, he's the best thing. Is there one this morning? Is there one this morning? You ready to say, accept Jesus? Because I'm going to tell you right now, he is the best thing. There's no one better. And he has the gift of salvation for you. Hallelujah. Perhaps you already have saved, but you don't have a church home. We offer Mount Olive to you. Hallelujah. You need to be somewhere where some folks know, know you. Then when you ask them to pray for you, they ain't going to ask you a bunch of questions. They know you as a church member, part of our family. We're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. So my wife just told you, it seemed like we everywhere else but in church. Y'all walk into places, restaurants and everything, you don't wipe your hands anymore. You don't use no sanitizer, but you come to church. Do y'all have sanitizer? Do you have masks? Hallelujah. Don't nobody cough in church. But you need a place to come in. Because I tell you, I, I like a spontaneous shout once in a while. A hallelujah that I can hear. Come to church. This is the best thing that happened to you is being among your saints. Amen. All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord as our deacons get a tithes and offering. As my wife was speaking, I, I'm just going to let her know I, I saw my mother-in-law in her as she spoke. My mother-in-law is a great speaker, a great woman of God. But one thing she always had, she knew a lot of songs, Sister a Minister Avis, and she would put them in, in her message. I'm sitting thinking, my wife, she knew a lot of songs. Amen. Amen. Sister Dorothy Howe would be tremendously proud of her. But I thank her. I thank her. Amen. She's been a blessing in my life. Hallelujah. And so, you know, I still say Jesus is the best thing. Amen. Amen. And don't y'all start no mess or nothing. But she's coming. She's close right up there with him. Amen. Amen. Now. Amen. So let us, let us come. This deacons come. Let us read our tithing scripture. Now I pray tomorrow that we remember. I'm be honest with you. I was not kidding. When these kids run into those trees or come to mom and papa and you give them a gift card or money or cash and everything, and that, that's all right. But don't tell them that no, Santa Claus brought that to them. I say, oh, he's bashing Santa Claus. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I'm Santa Claus. Amen. Your mama Santa Claus. Amen. Your grandmother Santa Claus. Your uncle is Santa Claus. Some of your good friends is Santa Claus. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Deacon Rita. Good afternoon, church. Y'all know what time it is. And you can't be godly living and you can't be godly giving. So let me give it to you, tithes and offering scripture. Be ye all the tithes unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will open a window of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Coming out of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Ushers come forward please. Thank you. Amen. As the ushers come we thank them. You know one thing that our churches are missing now. I'm, I just want you to think as we go into this new year. We need to get our children back to church. Amen. I mean from the youngest to the oldest. Amen. I miss them little times when we had the little bags with oranges and apples and nuts in it given out to the children, amen. But we need to bring the children back in the church, amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for this offering, Father. We ask you to bless those that had it to give, Father. We also ask you to bless those who didn't have it to give. May it be used for the purpose which it was raised, Father. And that's the furthering of your kingdom. All these blessings are in the Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we're about to go home. Just a couple more things, some announcements. So, amen. We thank you for your being to tithes and offering. And part of our offering, we do now have, uh, some of the young people say they don't carry cash anymore. So we do have cash app, amen. And so we, we will kindly take your money through cash app. And if you, <laughs> if you look at it on our website, if you look on the back, another thing, our newsletter. How many got their newsletter? Amen, okay. On a newsletter in the back is the met different methods you can give. The, the cash app is dollar sign Mont Olive Fresno. Amen. Amen. I don't want no, nobody. I don't want to refuse them young people to being blessed. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, know, you can also mail it in and then you can go to our website to make a thing. If you got your, if you got your news, if you got your newsletter, you see in one of us we have prayer and fasting starting next year amen we i'd like to see everybody participate in that we started on january 1st through the 7th and if you have your, it gives you a day that day break of scriptures to read amen if we pray a lot we go according to what god has asked to do even god says you know when the man came down from the mountain they couldn't heal his son because they say they prayed and couldn't he says some things come by fasting 
and praying. Amen. Sometimes think, some things take a little bit more than just praying. Sometimes you have to make a sacrifice while you're praying. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to go, just I have one more thing. Amen. Shamika, stand, please, Shamika, stand. Hey, we thank you for coming out today. And I know you're you're a student in theology over at Fresno Pacific, right? I just want to invite you to keep us aware. And if you need some, come in and, and want to say a word, just give the office a call. Amen. Or when you're available. Amen. 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 I, I want to encourage young folk. Amen. We got to encourage our young folk. Amen. If I see a young lady who's going into the ministry and all like that, I want to encourage her. Amen. 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond those days. I'm glad I served a pastor who did not say, this is my pulpit. Nobody else is going to get up in here. And he told me, he said, you know what? He said, I promised that whenever I became a pastor, every associate minister in my church would get up and preach and do it. I'm not going to close it off. And that great man was, if he ever had somebody that had needed the title bishop, it was Reverend Chester Riggins. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So this, this, this pulpit is not closed because I'm the pastor. It's open because I'm the pastor. And we're and we going to bring people in to speak to be blessed. All righty. So at this time, um, the other announcement, there was a difference with the men's ministry last week. It was my arrow that the time is the last, last Friday of the month. So it was supposed to, I thought it was this Friday. It could be in the fourth, but we're going to change that. It is this coming Friday, the men's ministry, amen? So let us remember that, men, because we're going to have to get men in the church, amen? We, we need some men in the church. And one more thing. Every time we meet, every time we do something, it's not just for fellowship. I want you to know we need to be about God's business doing something. We need to be doing outreach. How are we going to get people in the church? Not just by me preaching or the other men preaching by each member going out telling somebody about Jesus. Not all of us are called to preach, not all of us are called to be ministers, but we're all called to witness, amen, amen. I was talking to my wife and our, her cousin Margie, who's in, the, who's in the convalescent home, she called and said, I just wanna let you know that a church came out here and they bought me a blanket, they bought me cookies, they, they bought me candy, a book to do word search and everything. And they, it, you know what? That made an impression on her. And, it, and she said, it didn't look like it, look, it cost much, but it's such a nice gesture. So ladies and men, and men, we can do that also, amen? We can go to these homes and, 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 and talk to people. Hallelujah. Even a choir can minister to people. Amen. I remember my wife took them out caroling one day to convalescent home. So we, do, we can do outreach. All right. So let us, let us stand. Let us stand as we get ready to go. I'm going to have Sister Norman come and read. She was our speaker of the day. Come on, give her another hand of praise. As she comes, I want to thank Sister Marquisha Zant. Amen. A very talented young lady. Amen. Come on. She's very, very talented. Amen. She needs encouragement too. Amen. She has two young kids, young ladies, and young men. So keep her in prayer. Amen. Because the world is after our children. Parents, be aware of your children, even your own household. You see them on the internet, on the phone, or the computer a lot. Go over there and ask them what they're doing. Amen. Check on what they're saying. If they tell you, Mama, this is my phone, you take that phone away from them. Amen. You ain't paying no bills. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. We trust that you were benefited, that something was said or done today that was a blessing to you, that will carry you through this holiday season some of us have lost loved ones during this holiday season and 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 it's, the chairs will be empty yes some of us will, have shed tears this this year i know how i have i lost what, eight eight family members now but god is he's, I'm, I'm not that doesn't make me question god or love him any less nor does he mean it love he loves me any less it's just a challenge so i'm saying to you be of good courage 
regardless of what you're going through. Many of us are going through things. Be of good courage. Don't give up on God because things are difficult. Yes, life has struggles, but you can make it with God on your side. So God be with you. God, I be with you. God, be with you until we meet again. Oh, God, I be with you. Singing, God. God be with you. Let God be with you until we meet again. Amen. I just want to say that with you. Benediction and blessing. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forward and forever. Psalms 121, 7 through 8. God bless you. God keep you. Go with God.